In 2015, a YouTube channel by the name of Jimmy's Wish began uploading disturbing videos of a young boy who had allegedly been the victim of medical malpractice in Japan, resulting in him becoming severely disabled and on the brink of death. But is everything as it seems? Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out through the links in the description, or you can leave me a tip by clicking thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video is sponsored by Bright Cellars, the monthly wine club that matches you with wine that you'll love. To find your perfect match, you simply take a quick seven question quiz and they'll send you wine that is curated to your taste palette each month, or less frequently if you'd prefer. You can rate each bottle, which allows them to fine tune their recommendations to suit you even more, so each box will get better and better. In addition to the personalisation, Bright Cellars is a much more convenient way of buying wine. You can get it sent straight to your doorstep rather than having to wander around a supermarket reading labels and guessing which you might like most. Each box also comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairing, best serving temperature and origins, allowing you to learn about the wine and serve it in the best possible way. They also offer low alcohol and sparkling wines, but even if you're not a big drinker, the subscription box is a great gift idea and you never know when you'll have unexpected guests, so it's always good to have a bottle of wine ready in the cupboard. The Bright Cellars concierge team can answer any questions you may have, whether they're about the wine itself or about your subscription. Another great thing about Bright Cellars is that the packaging is completely recyclable, plastic free, and it has the smallest carbon footprint in the industry, so you can enjoy great wine with a clear conscience. There's no better time to try Bright Cellars, as for a limited time, you can get 50% off your first six bottle box by clicking the link in the description. This video will cover an extremely distressing story that might be triggering to some, viewer discretion is advised. You can head over to my Patreon for an uncut version of this video which features extra disturbing details and clips. The Jimmy's Wish channel has around 600 subscribers and was created by Jimmy's father James to spread awareness of what happened to Jimmy and generally the quote, horrific crimes that are condoned in Japan by widespread corruption. Each of the videos show footage of Jimmy with text overlay, mostly in Japanese, that presumably translates to the text in the descriptions. Jimmy is bedridden, unconscious, his body contorted in an extremely uncomfortable way, with a breathing tube and plasters over his eyes, which when removed show bloodshot eyes that appear to be unable to close properly or move, only half blinking irregularly. The description of the first video provides a summary of the situation, so I'll read that now. Because of years of cruel, willful negligence, Jimmy, now 18 years old, weighs less than 23 kilograms, which is less than Holocaust Auschwitz survivors. He suffers from rickets, hip and shoulders are fractured and horribly deformed. He is only four feet tall. Father was six foot three at age 18 years. Caused by intentionally severe malnutrition, depriving a child minimum calories required to maintain vital organ functions for growth, deprived access to sunshine and vitamin D deficiency, and years of repeatedly denying the pleading from child's parents to increase calories from a very low 800 calories per day and life-saving medical intervention. Jimmy's ribcage is collapsing into his heart and lungs, and because of this disgusting neglect, from August 15th, he suffers from a rare, life-threatening superior mesenteric artery syndrome due to a lack of retroperitoneal and visceral mesenteric fat. Jimmy has not eaten since August the 15th and receives calories from his neck artery, which is dangerous. His life could be at risk because he is not strong enough yet for emergency surgery. We have hours of tape-recorded evidence, but here we clearly establish with irrefutable evidence that the Japanese military doctors are unconscionable liars. In less than 20 minutes here, they are caught lying 23 times, more than a lie a minute, to cover up the suffocation of an 11-year-old child. 
What is horrifying is the USA Embassy, Attach staff, media, FCCJ also, and police all have this irrefutable tape-recorded evidence of a heinous suffocation crimes committed on an 11-year-old American child and condone horrific crimes on children. My wife and I are pleading for your help in bringing transparency to the horrific crimes that are condoned in Japan by widespread corruption. I have tape recorded hours of evidence to prove that heinous crimes are condoned in Japan against American child. FCCJ members are also extremely cruel and Noah pleads for help as Jimmy is running out of time and dying. Our son Jimmy is dying, being denied his human rights and access to the media or courts in Japan and urgently need the Congress to compel Japan to allow transparency, international investigation and force the hospital to increase his calories and life-saving surgery. When our son Jimmy was only 11 years old, he was suffocated with a plastic bag over his head until his brain severely damaged, left in a vegetative state and dependent of life support system to stay alive. The Japan military doctors had no informed consent or medical reason to put a plastic bag over a child's head until brain death and only admitted to the plastic bag suffocation because my wife and an outside surgeon had asked why Jimmy had a red mark around his neck. We have tape recorded evidence of one doctor who suffocated our child, who then abandoned our child to die, who then withheld therapy, who then conspired to cover up the crime and deny any involvement or knowledge of what happened to Jimmy. As they first insinuated, unconscionable liars, that father may have been the cause of Jimmy's brain damage, was the very same doctor calling another hospital doctor two days before his condoned crime to conspire with him to report father for neglect to Child Protection Agency. Why? Evidence also shows a staff member from the Child Protection Agency was at the hospital just after the suffocation of our child and withheld, did not contact parents to inform us that our child was dying from plastic bag suffocation. Why was he at the hospital after hours? Why are serious crimes and neglect condoned in Japan against American children? Horrific fact. Without international transparency, Jimmy could be suffocated to death with a plastic bag over his head without informed consent or medical reason. The USA Embassy, media, FCCJ also, and police will not investigate. Why? Dehumanization campaign against child's family began two months after suffocation crime. Why Jimmy? Four days before Jimmy was suffocated, I announced at a board meeting I was going to report to police. Leading scientists, a bureaucrat and executives from stem cell company were involved in fraud. We have emailed evidence from a bureaucrat on the 26th, two days before Jimmy was tortured, engaged in government coercion, warning us not to report the fraud to the police. Here are a couple of quotes from the descriptions of other videos that provide more detail on Jimmy's condition. I was horrified when I found him that morning in his hospital room where he was staying for a cold. His eyes blood red, locked open. His body was stiff and shaking tremendously with a fever exceeding 106 degrees, a red strangle-like mark around his tiny neck and he was suffering in critical condition, fighting for his life. Medical record evidence later confirmed that the hospital doctors were colluding in cover-up. By hospital after the suffocation atrocity showed that Jimmy had a blood glucose level above 300 milligrams, which is an important parameter in the prediction of outcomes associated with mortality in pediatric brain injury. And tragically, as the blood test predicted nearly 20 hours earlier, Jimmy twice suffered sudden cardiac arrest and had to be resuscitated by CPR to prevent his death. The doctors and nurses knew that our 11-year-old child had an extremely high chance of dying and deliberately withheld treatment. Many of the videos feature audio recordings which are allegedly confessions, though I don't speak Japanese so I couldn't tell you what gets said. Quote from a video description. We have hours of tape recorded evidence, but here we clearly establish with irrefutable evidence to cover up the suffocation of an 11-year-old child. This recording is evidence of one of the military doctors who suffocated my son with a plastic bag over his head, admitting that they put a plastic bag over our son's head for 10 minutes, compared to the head nurse who claims she observed 3 minutes while standing in the hallway observing the plastic bag suffocation, compared to the 30 seconds claimed by the head doctor. What is horrifying is the media, FCCJ also, and police all have this irrefutable tape recorded evidence of a heinous suffocation crimes committed on an 11-year-old child and condone this.
After the Jimmy's Wish channel was posted on Reddit a few months ago, one user gave a translated summary of the audio recordings. Again, I don't speak Japanese, so I can't confirm that this is accurate, but apparently Jimmy's mother asks why his eyes are red, and the doctor admitted that staff had lied about this, initially claiming it was due to a virus, but it was actually because they put something in his neck. The user also mentioned that they were discussing a plastic bag being placed in an oxygen mask rather than a paper bag, which is a slight discrepancy as the video titles and descriptions claim it was placed over Jimmy's head. Either way, I'm not sure what reason would be behind either scenario. If you watch the videos, you might notice that they seem a little… off. It has been noted that James sounds kind of monotonous and devoid of emotion, somewhat unusual considering what he's talking about. To me, he sometimes comes across like a politician trying to get votes, not a distraught father explaining that his son is dying. I'm an American living in Japan with my family. Your signature is now the only way to save my son's life and to bring transparency to the heinous crimes that have been committed and condoned in Japan by widespread corruption. Please share on Facebook, on Twitter. Your signature and transparency will have the police forced to move in the media to finally report these heinous crimes and allow my son to be given his human rights back in therapy. That could be because he has somewhat come to terms with the situation, or it could be because he's not being entirely truthful about what happened to Jimmy. Some videos feature dramatic music that just seems a bit out of place considering that we're watching a child who is apparently on the brink of death. Jimmy, look at me, please. Jimbo, please. Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimbo, I'm over here. Hey. One thing that is indisputable is that Jimmy is suffering significantly, however we only have the father's narrative to explain why that is. It's hard to make judgments based on the writing style, but James does seem to tell the story somewhat erratically. Incoherently at times, kinda reminiscent of videos made by people who claim they're being gang stalked, which is understandable given how distressing the situation must be for him, though there are a few reasons why I'm a little sceptical about his version of events. Firstly, I can't see any reason for medical professionals to have placed a plastic bag over Jimmy's head. I tried googling what reason there might be for this, it certainly doesn't sound like a legit practice, but maybe it was some kind of makeshift treatment. Nothing came up there. I also tried to find other similar cases, and the closest I came across was in July 2019, when a care assistant in the UK allegedly placed a plastic bag over a patient's head, and in his defence claimed he was playing peekaboo. Obviously this is very different to what happened to Jimmy, and while it's possible that that was an isolated incident for some unknown reason, it seems to be almost unheard of. What Jimmy's dad claims is irrefutable evidence is not irrefutable evidence, to us viewers at least, as we have no idea who is talking in the audio recordings or where they came from. He claims that the media and police have irrefutable evidence, yet why would they all be part of some huge conspiracy? Even if the police are corrupt, you'd think the media would jump at the chance to cover such a crazy story. There are also discrepancies in the dates mentioned by James. Numerous times he claimed the incident occurred on the 15th of August 2015, and yet the first YouTube video was uploaded on the 2nd of August 2015, 13 days before that. At other times he gives the date 28th of December 2007, his account is all over the place. I can only assume that the event itself occurred on the 28th of December 2007, and that Jimmy was in hospital and malnourished since the 2nd of August 2015, but none of it really makes any sense. If Jimmy isn't the victim of medical malpractice, then what is going on here? Well, this gets a lot deeper and a lot shadier, and while I still can't make total sense of any of this, there's more evidence to suggest that James's version of events isn't entirely accurate. The Jimmy's Wish YouTube channel is far from the only site created by James to spread awareness of the situation. There are other channels, a Facebook page, and various websites that provide some interesting details. In the Reddit posts about the YouTube channel, some users had pointed out that in photos of Jimmy prior to the incident that were posted on Facebook, it looks like Jimmy may have already been disabled. It is very hard to tell for sure. One thing that does stand out though is an x-ray posted on the Facebook page that clearly shows quite a severe skeletal deformity. Jimmy does not appear to have this in a photo of him as a baby. 
I'm not a doctor, but while some of the symptoms Jimmy is experiencing sound like they could be as a result of suffocation, I fail to see how that could cause a skeletal deformity. In addition to the alleged suffocation, James also mentions that Jimmy was malnourished and had a vitamin D deficiency because he was deprived access to sunshine, among other things. This is all quite confusing in itself because James makes it sound like Jimmy was treated by doctors very short term, so how could he have been so malnourished in the space of a day or so that he experienced such severe consequences? Surely that must have been ongoing for much longer. Sometimes he says the malnourishment occurred for six years, but if that is the case, why didn't James do something about it earlier rather than waiting until potentially years later, depending on which date we believe to be accurate? The missing puzzle piece here, or at least one of them, appears to be a section on one of James's websites where he mentions that Jimmy was treated with stem cell therapy in 1998, which all but confirms that Jimmy was not perfectly healthy prior to the alleged incident. According to an article on PRweb.com posted in December 2005 about one of James's companies, quote, GIG Corporation was established in 1999 by CEO James J. Ryan, focused on finding a cure for his three-year-old bedridden son who suffers from a devastating illness. This further confirms that Jimmy was already ill and bedridden. I have no idea why exactly. A likely possibility is that he suffered from a degenerative disease, the progress of which may have been slowed by the stem cell therapy, but at some point in the years that followed, it must have continued to develop. This alone doesn't totally disprove James's claims if we give him the benefit of the doubt. Whatever Jimmy received stem cell treatment for may have been unrelated to his condition after the alleged incident, but it feels like James is deliberately hiding potentially relevant pieces of information when telling the story to people who he probably assumed won't do any further digging on him. The more I read on James's websites, the less convinced I am by his story. It just gets more and more bizarre and conspiratorial. To summarise, at one point when Jimmy was 11, the exact date changes more often than James establishes a new company, which as you'll come to see, is pretty frequently. James decided to be a whistleblower and expose a bunch of scientists and a quote, influential bureaucrat's husband for being involved in, quote, scientific misconduct and multiple schemes of fraud. He claimed to have received threats as a result of this, specifically targeting his son. A few days later, Jimmy was admitted to a military hospital in Japan to receive treatment for a cold, but when James went to visit him, he was brain dead and had a red ring around his neck that James believes was caused by suffocation with a plastic bag. The many alleged reasons for this include, the doctors had him breathe into a plastic bag rather than a paper one, doctors intentionally suffocated Jimmy because they were experimenting on him or doing so as revenge because James spoke out about malpractice or as a threat to discourage him from saying anything more. As for the supposed experimentation, James compares it to the experiments conducted by Joseph Mengele, the Nazi Angel of Death, and Unit 731, a covert biological and chemical warfare project set up by the Imperial Japanese Army. He believes the doctors were extracting adrenochrome from Jimmy, a chemical compound that is a byproduct of adrenaline and has been the focus of conspiracy theories claiming that children are kidnapped and drained of their blood to harvest the adrenochrome, which according to the theories, has psychedelic properties when taken and can make a person immortal. Obviously these kind of theories are unproven and quite frankly ridiculous and therefore significantly reduce James's credibility, but if we still give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe we can assume that whatever the doctors did to Jimmy traumatised his father so much that he desperately clung to any possible reason he could think of to make sense of what was going on. He claims to have been in contact with a stem cell biologist, Yoshiki Sasai, who apparently confessed that adrenochrome had been taken from Jimmy, though before their meeting, Yoshiki took his own life. Yoshiki was a real person, and it's true that he took his own life after an investigation revealed that Haruko Obokata, with whom Yoshiki co-authored two papers on stimulus-triggered acquisition of pluripotency cells, had committed scientific misconduct and he was criticised for inadequate supervision. But James provides no evidence of his communication with Yoshiki. In fact, he gives no more information about him than what can be found on Wikipedia. Earlier, I mentioned one of James's companies that he apparently established with hopes of finding a cure for his son's illness. 
This is just one of many, as I found links between him and numerous shady companies, some of which don't even appear to actually exist. These companies include the aforementioned JIG Corporation, as well as Omgenium, El Pissarimo, and Armadine, and are all related to stem cell treatments and bioengineering. My knowledge of such topics is limited, so if anyone can provide any insight in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated, but it mostly seems like pseudoscientific mumbo jumbo to me, especially with the presence of phrases like treat diseases that are impossible to treat using conventional medicine, and various references to vibrations. I don't know about anyone else, but I eye roll and call BS the second I hear that word. Also, a few of the facts cited across the sites are blatantly inaccurate, such as the body regenerates every three months. Outside of the websites created by James, there is little information online about any of these companies, and none of them appear to have actually done anything. No studies, no treatments, it seems that they haven't even published any research papers, nor has James himself, despite claiming to have done over 20 years of research. On the websites, James is listed among various other co-founders that don't actually seem to have any involvement. For example, S.I. Moral, an actor who starred in Bad Boys, Ozark, and Mission Impossible, and various professors from around the world. Unsurprisingly, I wasn't able to find any information linking these people to these companies outside of James's own websites. Another potentially strange detail that may or may not be relevant is that the website for another one of these companies, Stem Cell Sciences, at one point began redirecting to a recruitment site for some kind of job in Hiroshima, where successful applicants would, quote, wear revealing clothes and be free to touch, straddle the knees of the sitting customer and dance to the music. The job description is translated from Japanese, so there is a chance that this is an error, but it says, quote, we are looking for children who have no resistance to that side. The questionable business ventures continue as The Guardian reported on Dr. Christopher Busby, a former Green Party science and technology spokesman who in 2011 was selling snake oil, or as he called it, anti-radiation pills, that he claimed would protect people from the effects of radiation after the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Despite claiming the pills were being sold at the cost of production, there was actually a huge markup and they were condemned as useless by various scientists. The pills and radiation tests were being sold through a website, foryoudetox.com, that was run by none other than James Ryan, Jimmy's father. Furthermore, James founded or was involved in a few different non-profit organisations, some of which, again, don't seem to actually exist, and the ones that do also seem shady, such as the Henry Dunant Children Foundation, which was collecting donations, though I have no idea if any money that was donated actually went to help children, as I couldn't find any information about the so-called charity outside of the now-defunct website. According to an article on amiblo.jp, translated from Japanese, none of these income and expenditure reports have been made. There is a previous history of acquiring a regenerative medicine venture that has fallen into a financial slump and trying to make money by the solid method of private stock listing fraud. There are many other websites that have been launched, but there is a possibility that it violates many laws and regulations, such as calling itself a stock company, even though the corporate registration cannot be confirmed, or calling itself an NPO corporation, even though the NPO corporation registration cannot be confirmed. The article also mentions that James lost a lawsuit that seems to have been related to the anti-radiation pills he was selling. James claims to have established Asclepius Therapeutics in 2004 with Dr. Yuri Volinsky and the Reproductive Genetics Institute, which he describes as the world's first patient-specific pluripotent stem cell company, though once again I was unable to find any ties between him and Dr. Yuri or the Reproductive Genetics Institute beyond his own websites. It's worth noting that just because I can't find any links doesn't mean there isn't any, I could well have missed something, but there's an increasing number of relatively well-known people in this field that James claims to have worked with that it's at least not easy to find any corroboration for. So after covering his suspicious past, I think it would be fair to say that James is, at best, a delusional conspiracy theorist, and at worst, a scam artist who has deliberately lied about his son's condition for his own personal gain, but was still left with the burning question of what happened to Jimmy. 
Let's discuss a few theories, progressively diverting from James's version of events. I think we can all agree that his exact story is far-fetched and hard to believe, particularly when he implies that Jimmy was healthy before being treated by the doctors, as even he contradicted that himself when he wrote on his website that Jimmy was treated with stem cell therapy in 1998. Is it possible that Jimmy's condition worsened during his hospital stay? Perhaps, and if so, considering James's wild claims of experimentation and adrenochrome are also far-fetched and hard to believe, it stands to reason that whatever happened in that hospital traumatised him so much that he used these conspiracy theories as a coping mechanism to give him someone to blame. While I don't believe Jimmy was experimented on, it's possible that he was a victim of some kind of negligence that caused him to deteriorate, though in the absence of any evidence to suggest that, it seems more likely that whatever the reason was for his hospital stay, it was more serious than a common cold. After so many inconsistencies, I'm questioning whether Jimmy was even in hospital at all prior to his extreme deterioration, as James provides no credible evidence to back up any of the details he gives. There are a few screenshots of emails with parts of the addresses blacked out, audio recordings of conversations with doctors that could have been faked, and it's not even entirely clear what they're about. Nothing concrete at all, so it's not totally unfeasible that this was all just a cover story. Jimmy's condition could have progressed naturally, and the hospital story may have been cooked up, again, as a coping mechanism, or maybe there is another cause, just not suffocation or negligence, etc. Maybe the stem cell treatment he received in 1998 actually did more harm than good, with James claiming to be a stem cell researcher who founded various stem cell companies, it's kind of bad for business if his own son was treated with them and took a turn for the worse. If he ever even was treated with stem cells, that is, we don't know that James didn't just make that up to promote his companies, then spun the hospital story when he was no longer able to hide Jimmy's rapid deterioration. I am hesitant to accuse a father in such a heart-wrenching situation of intentionally misleading people about his son's illness for personal gain, but we have seen enough evidence to suggest that he is a dubious individual, so can we really put it past him? Some comments on the Reddit post took this even further and suggested he might actually be directly responsible for whatever happened to his son. One comment stated that James claimed to have treated Jimmy himself in 1998. I haven't personally come across that claim directly, but I have seen him imply that. And with so many different websites that give so much different and often conflicting information, I wouldn't be surprised if he has said that at some point. If that is the case, perhaps that treatment is to blame for Jimmy's deterioration and James is trying to cover his tracks by blaming the doctors in the hospital. He claimed they were experimenting on Jimmy, but what if it was actually him that was using his own son as a guinea pig? It went wrong, and either he's unable to accept that it's his own fault, or he fears prosecution. Another comment read, Does anybody else think this guy did stem cell experiments on his son? I'm definitely getting mad scientist flees on country to experiment abroad vibes. The PRweb.com article referenced earlier stated that James's company, GIJ, would begin clinical testing on animals in 2007. Coincidentally, or not, the year that Jimmy turned 11, the age that James claims he was suffocated. Some Redditors even go as far as suggesting that James deliberately harmed Jimmy. For example, a post that was removed by the moderators on the Golden Truth subreddit pointed out various suspicious details and concluded with this. This all leads to a grim and depressing theory. I believe there is a high possibility that Jimmy's disabilities were deliberately caused while James Ryan's wife was pregnant or when Jimmy was very young. In fact, there is a mental health problem known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy. This is where the caregiver lies about symptoms, changes test results, and may physically harm their children to produce symptoms. My first thought is that since James Ryan is obsessed with stem cells, this could be some sort of sick science experiment gone wrong. From his LinkedIn, it's clear that he has no medical knowledge, so it is possible he and his wife used Jimmy as some sort of guinea pig to conduct tests on. My second thought is that James Ryan and his wife tried to kill Jimmy because they couldn't stand the thought of a happy son. Obviously this went wrong, and now they have to create an elaborate lie in order to not incriminate themselves. 
I personally don't really believe this theory. Anything is possible at this point, and I think it's highly likely that something shady is going on, but I don't think we have enough reason to assume that James deliberately harmed Jimmy. It seems more plausible that Jimmy was born with a degenerative health condition that James tried and failed to cure. Whether or not the treatment directly caused Jimmy to deteriorate further, I have no idea. The most recent video on the Jimmy's Wish channel was in September 2021, and I couldn't find any more updates since that time. No more videos, no Facebook posts, tweets, many of his websites have been taken down too for whatever reason. It's unclear why James has stopped posting online, for now at least. More to the point, why was he posting for so many years? In the YouTube videos, Jimmy's condition doesn't seem to have changed much at all since 2015, leading me to wonder if the more recent videos just contain old footage recycled into slightly different videos. For all we know, the footage in the 2015 videos is from years earlier. Also, seven years ago, James was stressing how close Jimmy was to death, so I hate to say it, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I'd be very surprised if Jimmy is even still alive now, and if that is the case, James was omitting that detail in his most recent post online. I wasn't able to find an obituary or any information in general to confirm this suspicion though, so take it with a pinch of salt. Overall, I really didn't expect this story to go as deep as it has. My initial thought before diving into this was that James was likely mentally ill, possibly schizophrenic, and was creating a conspiracy out of a tragic situation that in reality is much simpler, albeit no less depressing, than he portrays it to be. I personally still think that's the case, but I wasn't expecting to find he was involved in scams and multiple questionable companies and so-called non-profit organisations. That certainly sheds a darker light on this whole situation and introduces the possibility of forces other than nature contributing to what happened. I wouldn't totally rule out the theories of James being partly responsible for Jimmy's condition, either intentionally or, more likely, accidentally, but while criticising his version of events due to lack of evidence, I can't run with a different theory that also lacks evidence. The most likely scenario, based on the information we have, is that Jimmy suffered with a genetic degenerative disease that may have been temporarily improved or worsened by treatment in 1998, if he even underwent such treatment. Either way, it seems his disease naturally progressed, which may well have triggered some kind of breakdown for his father, who was unable to accept it and wanted someone to blame, so it made sense to him that the doctors must have done something to his son. Given his presumed lack of medical knowledge, he probably noticed things, like the mark on Jimmy's neck, didn't understand the actual causes, and basically put two and two together to get five, refusing to believe there might actually be a logical reason behind it. This might well be the most miserable story I've ever covered. Seeing the difference between photos of Jimmy smiling in his younger years, presumably still conscious and able to move, and the more recent videos, where he's bedbound and doesn't even seem to respond to his surroundings, is truly haunting. Sadly, if Jimmy is still alive, there appears to be no chance of him making a full recovery, or even much improvement at all. I can only hope that he isn't aware of what's going on, and therefore isn't suffering. I'd like to ask you not to contact or harass James or anyone else mentioned in this video. We can theorise on what's happening in this situation, but we really don't know for sure. And while there are numerous suspicious details wrapped up in this, it's impossible to know how much, if any, blame can be placed on James. We must also acknowledge how awful it must be to watch your child deteriorate, knowing there's nothing you can do about it, no matter how they ended up there, so please don't contribute to any pain the family is already feeling. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments. Do you believe anything James has said, or do you think there's more to this than initially meets the eye? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and leaving a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description to get 50% off your first six bottle box. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.